Hello, my friend, and welcome to Secure and Secure, hosted by me, Johnny Seifert. This is a celebrity mental health podcast that I say it's okay to not be okay. And if you have the same match as me, whether you're watching or listening, leave a five-star rating and a review. And let me tell you about my guest today. My guest today has given me the best showbiz story ever, from when we got locked in a theatre together and could not get out, and we could not stop laughing. She last came on Security and Secure in December 2021, and since then she's ticked her fourth soap off the list. As earlier this year, she started her new reign in Hollyoaks as Martha Blake, the evil grandmother to Sienna Blake. So as she continues her stardom of 50 plus years in TV and that way to get her damehood, I'm delighted to welcome back to Security and Secure with the thanks to the Ambassador Cruise Line, my dear friend Sherry Hewson. Hello, Hello. Sherry. Hiya. How are How you? Are you? All the better for seeing you and Thank because you, I get to actually see you being nice because I keep seeing you being really evil at the moment. Really evil, yes. I love it as well. Every second of it. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might have. Well, it's nice and different for you, isn't it? Because you've not really yeah. done that on TV before. We've always known you as Virginia. We've known you as Joyce. We're all very bubbly receptionists. Obviously, yeah. in the soap world, you've always been very light. What's it like going through chapter four of the soap journey and going, right, I'm going to rip up the rule book. I'm a little bit older now. The cast are a lot younger and I'm going to show them how to do it. When I was first offered this, it was sort of like a a serial killer come, but but I want to make her I shouldn't really. I want to make her funny. <laughs> you could be a funny serial killer, but I just want. I I think it's a different thing. I, I've been bad on stage, but I've never been bad on television. I mean, Joyce Temple Savage was a bit of a cow, but she was very funny, you know. And I always say. If you're a bad character, you always have a have to have a banana to slip on because you have to have an endearing quality. Otherwise, you become very boring as a bad character, I think, anyway. There always has to be some light moment. So in as Martha, although there's something very bad about her, but she has got moments which you'll see that you kind of a, a laugh out loud out loud moment. So I'm 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 trying to put those into the script, but I'm enjoying it, and it's a lovely place to work. They're all such lovely people, and I'm and I love everybody I work. My Blake family, you know, uh, Anna Passy and Jeremy Sheffield. They're all such a nice bunch of people so and we laugh a lot because it's quite funny <laughs> me, being, me being evil is quite funny I think anyway because I'm not that character so I'm having the best time well it's also funny because you know Jeremy Sheffield came back uh he was Patrick Blake originally comes back yes. as the brother Jets and you're like but I know you as Patrick and I know you as the evil headmaster and now you've come back as this nice kind of we don't really know his sexuality but something's going on there gardener and then you're like oh hold on a minute so how did you find it kind of coming into that family because that setup was already there and you know when you're so established and you know how to go into different casts all the time but when it's a soap and it's so close knit and you know the Blakes keep themselves to themselves quite a lot of the time how did you yeah. find coming into that it was so easy and they they were thrilled that I was there that as this <laughs> very strange evil character and and so we, we kind of carried that on now that you know what's Martha going to do next was it Martha that killed that pl- or was it you that killed it or is Martha going to kill some so it it's just a joy and we just laugh a lot about it and have have the best time ever but I think things will get more evil so I'm looking forward to that. See who I, if I, I'd like to kill somebody soon, but I'm not quite sure who. So I'm just waiting to hear. Well, it's a really weird year for Hollyoaks. And I, I actually thought you'd left the show because you're not in the titles at the moment. And obviously we've had the time jump now. So what's gone on with you and that? Because we haven't seen you in, I don't know what we call, what do we call it? 2025? Or do we just say one year one, but we there's a year that just didn't exist, the COVID year. Yes, I don't know. But I am in the next titles because um. I've now gone back. So I was I was not there in August, this August gone, because they were going to, um, with the time jump. So the next titles, I'm in that. So now I'm back having done the time jump. But um, I'm not sure if I could tell you I would, but I don't know really. I've been in a home, I think. I'm out of the home now. I'm back with Sienna now. I'm living with Sienna now. But she's thrown Jeremy out. But now I think we're all back. 
So it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I just go and I go, what's the next scene? <laughs> well, it's interesting. I, I mean, it would be interesting to hear your opinion as someone who's done so many soaps because, you know, for example, this week we had suddenly Tony and Marie in a relationship and it was kind of like they've just kissed and, oh, yeah, we got together last year and everything's kind of referred to last year and you could rip up yeah. the whole rule book. And for you, for someone who's, you know, you know your soaps inside out and you, you know, you've worked on them for the past, what, 30 years? So yeah. how do you find that having a soap opera that is a continual drama that's on every day of the week and you can literally go, right, we can literally actually just wipe the slate clean and do whatever <laughs> we want now? Actually, that's true, though. You can. I mean, it is a, it is a strange thing to jump like that. But actually, I think it sort of worked. I mean, you know, in the soaps, there's been what has been... Emmerdale had the plane crash, didn't they? Yeah. Coronation Street had the uh, train crash. I don't know what EastEnders has had. Has that had a crash? Did it's had a a, it's not had like what you've had where there have been multiple, multiple, multiple deaths. No, people disappear because they're dead. Yeah. So I think this is just another thing. The ratings have gone way up for Hollyoaks. I mean, beyond they've ever had. The streaming, which is what television is about now, isn't it? Streaming. And people don't... I think the way people watch television has completely changed. And I think in the next few years, it will change again. Because people don't... You know, like we used to watch something on a Friday night and wait till the next Friday with anticipation to see the next episode. People don't do that now, do they? They just stream it all, watch it all, and it's gone. Which I find really weird, because I'm of a generation where you didn't do that. So I think... Because we all have changed, I think television has to now change. And it probably will be streaming, I guess. Not that I know much about that, because I don't do that. But I suppose you do, do you? Do you stream? Well, this things? is your TV reporter. Because a lot of people won't know, you were a TV reporter once upon a time in the 90s. And this is the TV reporter of Sherry coming out now. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, with uh, soaps, it's a very different thing. But, like... Loose Women will never stream, I guess. But no, that, it couldn't. Yeah, it. yeah. I don't really know because I don't know what it, what the criteria is. What it what what is it a drama? Is it a soap? What is Loose some... Women? Is no, it a drama stream... or is it a soap? No. St- <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I just I just wonder is Loose Women a drama? Twenty five years is a drama? Is it a soap? You're going on something right there. Go yeah, on. is it? But will that stream? Well, I think streaming is all about the binge fest. So streaming is basically a way I, the way I look at it is streaming is basically the TV networks going, right, how do we keep you on our streaming site? How do we keep you as our audience that you don't go anywhere else? So because Netflix has gone up, Netflix go, right, we're going to keep you on Netflix and we're going to give you everything you want. So we'll give you some comedy. You want Benidorm, we'll give you Shameless. We'll give you um, a big American drama cool, keep that. And then you stay on Netflix. And then BBC have gone, right, we need to do the iPlayer, ITVX, Paramount Plus. Oh, so yeah, every yeah. single channel is gone. How do we keep you there for longer? So we'll give you shows that don't go out on TV. We'll give it to you in a year in advance. We'll give you an American import and then you don't need to leave us. I think that's the basis. I think what you're referring to probably more is the binging and how oh, you binge okay. something. So yeah. you would go, right, Hollyoaks, it's not five days a week, it's three days a week now. They're 20 minute episodes. So on a Wednesday, you can just watch it for an hour and then you don't need to sit down every day and have the oh, advert. And, you know, Corey, watch at the end of the week. It's like the omnibuses of our generation of, here's the omnibus without the adverts, bang, you're done. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I'm, but that's the way of the world now, is it, do you think? That's I think so. I think we yeah. want to consume everything so quickly. And that's why for Hollyoaks, for example, being Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is quite interesting because I would have gone... Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because that wait between Wednesday and Monday is quite a long time. Yeah. And also there's not as much going on now because the episodes are shorter. And so it's a long wait to go, oh, what happened next? You know, it's that cliffhanger of EastEnders going, I need to watch tomorrow because I need to know the resolution yeah, yeah, to what the yeah. climax is. So I think from that perspective, it's interesting. But I think you're still going to have linear TV. You know, like you yeah. say, with Blue Swimming, you can't not have that. You can't have current affairs and news and Good Morning Britain this morning just being a streamer. You might have another version of it, but you still have to have linear TV as it is because we all love watching things as a community. You know, Benidorm, I know, has had a big resurgence on Netflix, but back in the day, it was great watching it with everyone. Same as Love Island, same as Bake Off. You want to watch it live and be in that community in that moment talking about it. Yeah, but but Benidorm now is bigger than ever. 
you know, the, the ratings are bigger than ever because it's on Netflix, it's on That's TV, it's on another channel, I think, and it's it's on a loop constantly, which I guess that's what they do. Well, same as Only Fools and Horses is on a loop, isn't it? You know, it's the same thing over and over. And I just think, and people watch it as well. They watch it. Everybody I speak to in the street go, we watch it every night. We turn Benny Dawn on every night. And it's our it's our go-to television now. And I just think that's extraordinary because as soon as they get from one to ten, the television companies put it back to one again. So it starts again. And how do you find that? Because um, I spoke to Asa Elliot a couple of weeks ago about it as well. And it's oh. the interesting thing of like, I love Benidorm. You know, I love that as a TV show. I love the stage show. I really want to go to Benidorm next year and just experience the whole life. Yeah. But it's a cultural thing, I think. The TV programme, I think, has just become very much of our DNA of the best of British. But did you think that when you were starting it, when you started filming it, where it was just a show on ITV that had gone from half an hour to an hour and that was it? Yeah, I mean, it it didn't occur to us out there that it was going to be as big as it was. Never occurred until later on, till we got to about series eight, I think, or nine, when it was so big, and then uh, and then it stopped, which was extraordinary because it was stopped at the one of the biggest times of it, its ratings ever. I think it was on at nine million at the time or eight million. And it stopped. And I found that extraordinary. And I think maybe ITV do now because it should have carried on, really. But you could say that about anything. But um, but we never really thought it was it was going to be as big as it was ever. And now it's even bigger. So, I mean, and it's fantastic for us because it's a show we all loved so much, you know, and, and I look back on it now and think how clever it was. Clever writing, clever casting. It was brilliant and beautiful filming. Cost a fortune then, but because of Brexit now, we, we probably would struggle because we were out there five months a year and you can't be out in Spain five months now. You can only do 90 days. So that's cut filming down quite a lot. So it, it would be very different now, but I still think there's a market for it. So, But you get you your royalty know. checks in each year. So, you know, the repeat fees yeah. must be doing well for you. You get well, the little no, check for three pounds. Don't... We don't get those because I think Equity did a deal, and that's why they can <laughs> uh, they can put it on a loop because they don't have to pay anybody. <laughs> but also, I think it's like Vaulty Towers. You know, twelve episodes. It went out on a high, and the beauty of Bendham is I went to the same hotel for twelve years, and it was the same people going back year after year after year in Grand yeah. Canary, and you could relate to it. Whereas if you were now on season twenty it would have been so diluted now that yeah. it would have lost the heart of it. Whereas at the moment with 10 series, the heart is still there. The soul is there. You still had the great cameos of, you know, the Matthew Kelly's, the Tony Hadley's, the Shane Richards, the Chuckle Brothers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what would you do now? Have a Love Island style? Like it wouldn't have the same no. essence to it. It would be very different now. It would be. The only thing a Darren could do is write a film. Well, this is it. He said this week he's not doing a film. I, I, I don't I don't understand that because you could bring characters from all over that were, were in it for years and create all sorts of stories. And I, I've always said to him, the film would be fantastic. But I, it, it's up to him whether he writes it or not, you know. What was that comedy that your friend Gwen Taylor did? Oh, Bob, how did I forget about Barbara as well? Everything. I loved Barbara. Barbara, uh, yeah. But Gwen Taylor, what was that holiday show she did? Uh... Oh God, it's on now, isn't it? It's on, yeah, it's on I what I binged it. Um, there we go. Talking about binging, I binged it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, whatever it's called, but brilliant. And now Julie Chalmers, you could even do that. You don't even need to have, um, you know, twenty, thirty characters. If you can't get everyone back, you could do it with four characters, and you could still get the most amazing. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> a film would be the perfect. Uh, I, I mean, because everybody is crying out for Benny Dorm. Everywhere you go, people are saying, "When, when, when." I don't know, but I but I do keep saying, wouldn't a film be a good idea? But it's not, you know, it's whether Darren writes it or not. So I you haven't gone on. You haven't gone on from Joyce Temple Savage. She's still very much part of you. You're not like that was Joyce. Yeah. That was that job. I'm now Martha. And oh that's God, it. yeah. No, everybody thinks of me as Joyce, and it and it was a fabulous time. Ten years of our life, you know. So it was a it was a wonderful time. Mentally, how have you found the past year show? Because Everything that's happened with the time jump, you know, the have I got a job? I'm losing friends who have lost their jobs at Hollyoaks. And then obviously, you know, you're staying. That's that job. Then you've got the idea mentally that 
you know, everyone knows you, like you've just said, you know, Joyce Temple Savage for 10 years, that was you. But then people know you as Virginia Raven. People know you from Barber, from Corey. And so therefore, when you've had so many roles and then you'll be being defined by one, but then Hollyoaks have come in mentally, how are you finding that whole timeline of the Sherry Houston of the past 50 years? I just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> whatever comes in, I'm grateful for the script. I'm grateful for whatever is passed over to me and I will do the best I can to whatever the scripts are i will do whatever i can i'm just i'm just having the best time of my life so and i'm very lucky and i'm very grateful for everything that comes in so holly holly Oaks is just fantastic and i'm thrilled to be doing it so it's my life now and aren't i lucky aren't very I much lucky? That. well aren't we lucky that we still get to watch <laughs> and that a new audience is coming through going oh who showed his name yeah, yeah. Oh, going, what's right. doing now? yeah she's a serial killer <laughs> well, they're going to go back to Russ Abbott's show now and start watching you there. And the audience are going yeah. to go, like, these 10 year olds are going to go, Russ Abbott's show, what's that? And then they're going to find this whole magic. So I look know. what you're doing. I know. Amazing. Yeah. Um, let's talk about National Grandparents Day. It's coming up yeah. next week. You're doing some work with Ambassador Cruise, which I absolutely love. I love Cruise. I'm going on a cruise in a couple of weeks, my birthday again. And I love it. So talk to me all about what's going on there. I love it. And, uh, and the Ambassador Cruise line is fantastic because they do, they're pushing the Grandparents Day. There is a Grandparents Day, but nobody knows. <laughs> So they're trying to make it the, one of the biggest things. And I think it's really important being a grandparent myself. I know how important it is with life. But if you've got a nan, any of your listeners out there, or grandma that you love, you can go on the Ambassador Cruise Line website. You can nominate them and they will get a free seven-day holiday for two people. So that's really important to remember because that would give them the gift from you as your grandchild to your grandparents to say thank you and ambassador will make it the best holiday ever so they must do that and it will be fabulous for them and it is a thank you you know and you can nominate me if you want <laughs> well, i was going to say if keely was going to do the nomination for your grandkids what would she be writing why are you the best best grandmother because i never say no i love them more than anything in, ever they make my heart beat every day and I'm always there 24 hours a day when needed, which is what grandparents do. And they come to me and they can do what they like. They can eat what they like. They can wear what they like. They can go to bed when they like. They have the best time ever. Oh, amazing. Well, my big thanks to Sherry Houston there, and a big thank you thank to the Ambassador you. Cruise Line. For more information, ambassadorcruiseline.com is where you can get more information. If you love Sherry and you love all the people she's worked with over the years on Loose Swimming, on Hollyoaks, on Benidorm, on Corey, they're all in the folder of Security and Secure. Go and check out those episodes now and click that subscribe button. And remember, it's okay to not be okay. I'm Johnny Seifert. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.